Okay, um, our next speaker is Alex North from Kent. First time that she's been to the Dry Labs as well, and she was recently announced as one of the winners for the Learning Science Teaching uh, Innovation Awards, which is what she's presenting here today. So uh, congratulations on that award, Alex, and really looking forward to hearing what you've got to say. Thank you, Nigel, and uh, thank you, David, as well, for um, inviting me to talk um, about this project. So just paint a little picture. I started um, my lectureship in March. So I was thrown straight in the deep end of trying to figure out what to do, how to help students. Um, so I am a lecturer in microbiology in the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent. Um, and this is gonna be a little bit different than you've probably heard before. I'm gonna discuss how we developed a smart worksheet to identify student numeracy skills in the division of natural sciences. And this was in collaboration with uh, learning science. And I just wanna thank, cause I know a couple of people from learning science are here today. Um, thank you very much for um, selecting this project as one of the winners, one of the five winners of the Teaching Innovation Awards. So let's just have a little recap of what happened. So um, this is really in reference to the impact of COVID-19 on further education. So on the 20th of March, 2020, all face-to-face -face teaching A-levels and BTECs ceased. Examinations were canceled. And later on in August, there was a U-turn for the predictions of results. And in, tw in June, 2020, the EDGE Foundation uh, undertook a national survey of students and teachers. And one of the questions they asked teachers is, approximately what proportion of your learners are continuing their learning remotely? And as you can see from the data here, it shows that most students were engaging with this online material. However, when students actually were surveyed themselves, they said that the blended approach online, going from face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching was extremely complex, complicated and difficult to access. Where 43% of students, if they were to study at higher education at university, would require catch-up support in those specific areas. They also said that they are lacking in confidence, knowledge and understanding in those programs. What about the impact of COVID on STEM? Well, actually having a look at uh, the publications, there's not much um, out there on the impact of COVID on education uh, for STEM, but there was a really nice paper published by Turner et al. Um, in early uh, 2020, looking at um, the learning loss and the transition of uh, further, student, uh, further education students to higher education students um, as a result of COVID-19 school disruptions. And in that paper, they showed that um, they asked a question and surveyed students asking, um, do they think that students starting an undergraduate chemistry course in 2020 will have less knowledge than the previous years? 71% of students said yes. So it really showed that students were feeling that they had a lot less knowledge to go into their higher education and university degrees. So how does this affect the natural science division at the University of Kent. Well, we've got a subset of skills necessary for those students to undertake these degree programs. These include mathematics, problem solving and writing skills. So we wanted to design a tool to identify any students that are struggling in these specific areas. And then in collaboration with the Student Success Project in the university, we'll develop innovations um, and interventions to be able to really tackle these problems. Today, I'm only really gonna discuss about the mathematics um, tools we've used, but we've also developed um, some for problem solving and writing as well. So we used, um, in collaboration with Learning Science, a numeracy smart worksheet to really I uh, isolate those students that could be struggling. It was designed to be interactive online, resource so students can use it from a laptop mobile etc any resource that they've got available it covered the fundamental properties of mathematics we needed um, for students to start any of the programs throughout the uh, natural science division in a range of different presentation styles so we weren't just looking at the theoretical um, understanding it incorporated questions from GCSE, A-level and BTEC, and it increased in um, intensity as it went through uh, the actual sections. 
So it's designed where there were five sections, each worth 20 points. So it's almost like bringing gamification into um, this, this uh, test. All of the questions were ram randomized. So it allowed us to look at students individually where they might be struggling. Students were able to do this test um, repeatedly. So if they wanted to improve their score, they could do. Um, for any incorrect answers, we had pop up back instantaneously offering hints to help them along the way. They also had a solve button if they really were struggling with that question. So it allowed them to continually proceed through and progress through this quiz. So here are just a couple of um, uh, examples of the areas we tested in the numeracy test. So for example, percentages, um, accuracy and precision, dilutions, rearranging equations, different graph types. And students were able to monitor their own progress along the entire way. Now they could do it any time. It wasn't um, restricted to a time. So they could do it in a couple of days, over a week, et cetera. But they could see how many, answered, uh, how many questions they'd answered, um, how many they got correct, and how many they'd actually had help with. And we could see all this as well. Here's just an, one example of the questions. So for example, the rearranging of uh, and uh, solving equations. We gave a general overview of what the question was going to ask. Also, any information they needed to proceed with that question, such as the dilution equation shown here, and then the actual main body of the equation, uh, the main body of the question itself. The numeracy test was then put onto a divisional Moodle page um, called Science and Study Skills Analysis. And we renamed the numeracy test to numeracy practice because we really didn't want to deter our students from attempting it because obviously they were already worried about the lack of knowledge. We didn't want them to get, just completely disregard it and not um, take the test. So we gave them an outline of why we we're asking them to do it um, so that we could support them throughout their degree. But also we highlighted the fact it wouldn't um, count towards their degree in any way as marks and that it was completely confidential. We also wanted to make um, clear that they didn't have to answer all the questions if they didn't want to and they could stop at any time. So allowing the students to approach it in a positive mindset. We emailed the link to the Moodle page um, uh, in our preterm communication. So this was two weeks before welcome week and we gave the students four weeks to complete it. This gave us a really nice time frame for data analysis and also for us to implement any kind of support aids into our curricula um, prior to their programs can, you know, advancing across um, time. So I'm just going to show you some of the data that we got from the biosciences side. So we, we were able to split up between each of the schools um, all of the data. So I'm just going to show you what we looked at for the biosciences. So at that time, we had 260 students registered. Of that, 60% engaged with the numeracy skills test. We were then able to look at the data even further by looking at the comparison of the engagement with the test along with the average marks against the EDI characteristics. And you can see just from the bar charts here that Students um, usually uh, were from female, white, non-disability cohorts. But we were able to have a look and really zoom into all of these different areas um, quite uh, specifically. But interestingly, when we looked at the marks across each of these cohorts, it did not differ significantly at all. And the majority of students got 60, sorry, 76% as an average mark, showing that actually, the 60% that did undertake that numeracy test were actually quite proficient at mathematics. However, we can't forget about the 40% that did not engage. When we looked at the EDI characteristics for this, we saw that the majority of students who are male and in the BME student cohort did not engage with the numeracy test. But even so, we asked the question, okay, so 40% did not engage with this. Is this due to the lack of confidence in math skills? And we're still undertaking some um, uh, analysis to really determine that, you know, the answer to that question. But because we wanted to start straight off from um, our week, uh, week two, 
interim, we decided that we'd implement some resources for the entire cohort for the School of Biosciences to aid in their ability and understanding of mathematics. And there are a majority, there are, there are quite a few different resources we used, but one of them, I don't know if you've had a look at this before, is um, produced by Dr. Peter Clapper, who is one of our senior lecturers in the Department of Biosciences. And he's got an excellent YouTube channel that really goes into detail about um, mathematics required for biosciences programs. So that was a quick whistle stop tour of one of the, um, uh, of one of the tools we've been able to produce to aid our students in support and success. And I'd like to just thank Emily Coit and the team from Learning Science for all the help with this. Uh, Mr. Francis Samra, he did all the data analysis. And we had a couple of academics in the School of Physical Sciences and the School of Sports and Excellence Science that also contributed. And this project was funded by our Student so Success Project from the University of Kent. So I want to thank them as well. Um, and with that, I'd just like to ask if you've got any questions and if you want any details, please feel free to email me as well.